Hey guys, today we're going to cover doing a uh, wheel bearings on a 2004 Nissan Maxima. Uh, 2004, 5, 3, I think they're pretty much all the same. Um, but what I've done is I went ahead and jacked it up and uh, put a jack stand under it. You don't want to trust just the jack. You always want to have that jack stand in there too. Alright, then we're going to uh, remove the wheel of course. That's step number one. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and remove this cotter pin, take this nut off. If you don't have an impact gun or air tools, uh, the best thing you can do is get your socket on there, get your uh, you know half inch driver ratchet on there, put a pipe on it, put a pipe onto the ratchet and stand on the end of it. This bolt is really, really tight uh, to be doing by hand, but it can be done. Um, and of course you want to put it back on just that tight so we're going to take off this cotter pin take out that nut then we're going to take off these caliper bolts right here what holds the caliper on there there's two of them in the back we're going to remove both of those I got me a bungee cord on standby so I can hook it to the spring up here and then hook it to the caliper so the caliper's not just uh, dangling on this brake line. This is a rubber hose with a, you know, brake fluid running through there. I don't want to hang it on there, cause a crimp in that brake line, and we'll have brake issues later on. So, uh, but that's what we're going to do right now. We're just going to remove this caliper, two bolts, take the center nut out, and uh, then I'll show you what's next. Take out your cotter pin. 32 millimeter nut. That was easy. And two 14s on the back of the caliper. Rest that right there for now. Okay, so we took off our caliper bracket and our uh, rotor. Uh, one time we took out these uh, two nuts here, which are 19 or 3 quarters. Uh, took out them, we took off the bracket, and then we slid the rotor off. Uh, what we're going to do now is get to the lower ball joint nut right there. It's got a cutter pin in it. We're going to remove the cutter pin, remove that nut, and then around here on the tie rod end, we're going to remove the uh, cotter pin, remove that nut. That's what we're going to do right now. Looking good, huh? Okay, so we got off the ball joint, uh, seven eighths, the uh, tie rod, uh, three quarters. We took off those nuts. Now what we're going to want to do is separate where those two go together. Now, if you look, you'll see this is, has a rubber boot on it here. If I stick my tuning fork in there, and beat it, I'm going to damage this rubber boot on the lower ball joint, separating this knuckle. But if you look on the knuckle, there's a raised metal edge right here on it. Right there is pretty thick. What we're going to do is strike that with a hammer right here. The vibrations caused in the metal by doing that will cause this to come separated. It's also nice to put a long pry bar in across top of the control arm and under the frame and push down on it when you're doing that and it shouldn't take no more than just a couple of licks to separate that. Around here on the tie rod what we're going to want to do again is the same thing. We want to strike it right here on the raised edge to the metal. We'll turn the wheel so it's pointed out and strike it there and this will just jump right out when we strike that. Alright I hope yours uh, come off as easy as mine. That was a uh, little to no effort. Uh, now what we're going to do is on the inside, we have a uh, ABS sensor, the wheel sensor that comes down. I think that's a 12 millimeter. Try this. Look this up. Twelve it is. Alright, give this a twist. And then just pull it straight out, lay it back to the side. Or it's out of the way. Now we're going to take out these two nuts here, uh, then we'll slide this unit off, uh, providing this axle wants to let go. And this one's kind of stuck, I was hoping it was, so I could show you guys. This little dimple in the center of the axle, and so you can get a punch in there and hit it without damaging these threads. If you'll notice, these threads come all the way out to the end of this axle shaft, so if you hit bluntly 
with a hammer chances are you're going to damage these threads have to file them down have a hard time getting the nut back on if you don't have a punch use the round edge of your hammer center it right up in that hole and tap it straight back there as to not hit those threads uh, while holding the uh, the knuckle outward just a hair tap on that get it to come on out but I uh, remove these two nuts and the uh, the knuckle is mine I'll show you what's next Woo! almost there all right, so there's our knuckle. I've taken it off, and what we're looking at is the back side of it. I'm setting a 4x4 four four down here at the lower ball joint, and I'm putting a 4x4 four four up here where it hooks to the strut, right up underneath there. And I've made sure that my studs aren't going to hit the ground, that they have plenty of travel room before they hit anything. Now, what you want to do, and I'm showing you this way because not everybody has a press in their backyard or the garage like I do. Excuse the airplanes. Um, I've got an old socket. This one's broken, so I don't mind damaging it. If not, uh, you can use a uh, steel dowel, a uh, piece of tubing, something, something firm, but not. To, uh, you don't have to worry about damaging this inner race here. Uh, it is tinsel steel. You're not gonna, you're not gonna chip it or anything. So find you something that will center into the uh, the the hub, just the inner inner part, uh, and strike it with a hammer. Uh, what we're going to do is drive this uh, wheel hub assembly out of the hub. Uh, like I said, they're pressed in. It would be a whole lot easier for me to do it in a press, but I can't show you with a press, and not everybody has one. So uh, this is how we're going to do it. And I'm going to set the camera over here and give you a little example. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard to do. Let's see if we can get this camera set right. That wasn't so hard. What we did was driven that one out. So that wasn't so bad, was it? I hit pretty hard, so I don't think I was just tapping it. All right, next, we're going to remove this inner snap ring on the back side. You'll find it with a gap in it. I've already run a rag around there and cleaned it out. You'll have to do the same. Catch it in there and remove this snap ring because the bearing assembly comes out this way. But we're gonna remove that snap ring. Then we will turn this hub over and knock out the bearing. You say, wow, there's bearings. Yeah, because the other race has stayed on this end. We'll get to that in a minute. I wanted you guys to see how I get these clips out because they can be really troublesome for someone who's never done it before. There's just a small lip there to get a hold of and you gotta pull them out. So. I have this little hook tool, that little handle on it, um, and what I'll do is uh, stick it in there behind the, the ring, there's a lip that you can grab a hold of to pull it out, out like so. See the little lip I've got behind right there? And that will allow me to get this snap ring out, get a screwdriver behind it and work it all the way around until it's out. But that's how I get this out. Now for the hard part, what we did was a uh, beat the uh, bearing and the race out the center of it it's easy just strike it with a hammer a few times all the guts will fall out and I flipped it around and removed the other uh, snap ring to give me room to beat with uh, now what we're gonna do is uh, simply beat it out the back uh, you're gonna need a, a rather large object this is gonna be hard for some of y'all but I have these really large industrial sockets and I put a uh, brass plate on top and strike the brass plate uh, and that'll drive it straight out for me. That's going to be kind of hard for y'all to come up with. This is a two and an eighth, so that's that's rather large. But if you can find uh, something that'll fit in there, um, you're going to have to have something that'll fit, you know, within that race, so you can strike it firmly out. It'd be really great to go use the press. I want to cheat right now, uh, but I'm going to strike it with a hammer just to uh, show it can be done. And that's about a. 50 good licks right there. It's about halfway back. And I'm going to continue to pound a few more minutes and then uh, we should have it out. Alright, so there's the race we just took out of the, uh, the hole. Uh, we beat it out, come out clean. We're going to want to keep a hold of this. It's going to come very useful for putting the other one back in the hole. And here's our brand new one. Thank you, Nissan. Now we're gonna take our brand new bearing. We're gonna put it on the board. 
So we're gonna take our rotor knuckle and put it right on top, centering it in the bearing. Now we're gonna lubricate before we do anything else, and I'm gonna take a board, I'm gonna lay it across here, and I'm gonna smack it, which is gonna drive the bearing up into the knuckle. I'm gonna pay attention to how far I go, because uh, I wanna re reinstall the uh, snap ring in the back here. Um, and the only reason I took it out the back is because it's easier, it's got a lot more room. And the only reason I'm putting it in the front is because it's easier. There's a lot more room. It's easier to knock this knuckle down onto the bearing than it is to knock the bearing down into the hole. So, uh, that's what we're going to do right now. I'm striking on the outside edge. You do not want to hit onto the center in here where the bearing is. You don't want to hit that cap. You want to hit the outside edge only. Much harder than the hammer. You don't have to worry about denting it. And I'm just, as you can see, lightly tapping it all the way around to sink it down. All right, when you get it down close enough, you can just drop it down a few times to finish knocking it in there flush. Careful not to dent into the wood too much. That's going to hit on the bearing seal. So just lightly if it's not working then tap back around the edge. But we're going to stop right now and we're going to put in this back o-ring before we get up any uh, any closer. Uh, we're going to put in this over this snap ring, excuse me. Uh, we're going to put in that snap ring and then we'll continue to drive it on back. And remember the race? I told you to hold on to it. This is the reason we're going to hold on to it. We're going to center it now right on the outside edge and make sure it's nice and straight. We're going to hold it. Then I'll strike it here. I'll make sure it's centered. Then I'll strike it here. Do it again. Strike, 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 strike until the bearing seats all the way down the rest of the way till we can secure the uh, second snap ring into place. That's why we had to hang on to this. Excellent, excellent tool to reinstall the other bearing. Remember that race we had still stuck on the hub? Well I took my ziz wheel and I made a cut in the race. Not all the way through, just almost all the way through. Now when I smack it with my hammer it's going to crack because it's brittle. So I'm just... There it cracked. I just saw it. Now I should be able to just ever so lightly tap that right off of that hub and then uh, hope it didn't set up that car alarm anyway just uh, lightly tap on this and it should come right off the hub we'll be ready to put it back on our bearing assembly or the uh, knuckle assembly over there here's our race as you can see I cut it but I didn't cut all the way through but when I hit it with the hammer I don't know if I can get a shot of it it cracked. Um, well, you can't really see it, but I can see it pretty well. The camera's just not picking it up. There's a nice crack in it running. There it is. There's a nice crack, and it just cracks. Then you can uh, tap it right off. And then we're going to set it back up, put it back in. Uh, we're going to lubricate it, of course. We're going to put our uh, center dowel right here on top of the second half of the race because we don't want it popping out of the bearing when it meets it. So this is where our focal point is to keep the uh, pressure off the bearing we'll strike it there with a uh, an adapter so that's how we're going to do that and when you're done you should be looking at something like that hopefully you didn't strike your seal or damage the uh, 
the seal there, that would be bad. Uh, but that's what you should be looking like. Now you're ready to reverse procedure to install. And be able to make it a whole car again. Good luck. You guys got any questions, give me a holler. This is a kind of toughie.